Antennas are engineered devices used to send and receive electromagnetic waves. They are typically single port devices, meaning that a guided wave enters or exits the antenna at a single location. Energy entering the port of the antenna will result in electromagnetic radiation outward from the body of the antenna. This is known as the transmit mode of the antenna. Or electromagnetic energy impinging upon the body of the antenna may be funneled out through the port in the receive mode. A typical basic communication system involves two antennas, one of which is used to send or transmit a signal and the other of which is used to receive it. Like any system with an input and an output, the basic two antenna system may be analyzed in terms of a system gain. This is the ratio of the power coming out the port of the receive antenna to the power entering the port of the transmit antenna. It is important to note that this system gain is not the same thing as the antenna gain, which is a property of each individual antenna. System gain in this two antenna system is affected by a number of factors, which can generally be classed under the categories of intrinsic properties of the individual antennas, properties of the system configuration, properties of the transmission medium and or environment, and compatibility of the two antennas. Let's look at each of these components in turn. The first consideration is the intrinsic properties of the individual antennas. Let's start by looking at the antenna gain of the transmit antenna. Antenna gain, which again is different from system gain, is a measure of how well the individual antenna converts the input power to output power. In the case of the transmit antenna, the input power will be a guided electromagnetic wave entering at the feed port of the antenna, and the output power will be a radiated electromagnetic wave from the body of the antenna. Since the output power is likely to be concentrated more strongly in certain directions than in others, antenna gain is a directional quantity. It depends on the location of the observer relative to the antenna. The second part of this consideration is the antenna gain of the receive antenna, which is again a measure of how well the individual antenna converts the input power to output power. In the case of the receive antenna, the input power will be an electromagnetic wave impinging upon the body of the antenna, and the output power will be a guided wave funneled into the output port of the antenna. Since the antenna will likely receive power more efficiently from some directions than from others, the antenna gain is again a directional quantity. It depends on the direction of the incoming wave. The second consideration when looking at a two antenna system is properties of the system configuration. For instance, consider the importance of antenna alignment. Each antenna should be oriented so that its direction of maximum gain is pointing toward the other antenna. If they're not properly aligned, large amounts of power may radiate in the wrong direction, or they may reflect off the receive antenna without entering it. In either case, this would appear to the system as loss. Another factor of antenna configuration that plays a role in system gain is path loss. The further apart the two antennas are from one another, the more the wave will be attenuated as it travels between them. This is not due to any material losses of the medium in which the wave is traveling. Instead, it's due to the fact that an electromagnetic wave with a spatially finite source spreads out as it travels. This spreading results in a reduction of power density and means that less and less power is going to be captured by the receive antenna. This path loss depends on the frequency of the wave and may be calculated as PL equals 4 pi r over lambda squared, where here PL stands for path loss, r is the distance between the transmit and receive antennas, and lambda is the wavelength of the transmitted signal. The third consideration when it comes to transmission of a signal between two antennas is the properties of the medium or environment in which the wave is traveling. Remember, we said that path loss is a factor of electrical distance from the transmitter and is not a function of the medium. However, if the medium in which the wave travels is lossy, and remember, any medium with a degree of conductivity will be lossy, 
the amplitude of the wave will be attenuated by alpha, the attenuation constant of the medium. So in addition to path loss, the signal will also experience material loss, which is due to the properties of the medium in which the wave is traveling. Any inhomogeneity in the path between the two antennas, including obstacles such as trees or buildings, can also result in reflections, which reduces the amount of power that successfully arrives at the receive antenna. These obstacles can also introduce noise, as the reflected signals can bounce around and ultimately arrive at the receive antenna. Since they traveled a longer path to get there, they arrive slightly after the direct signal, like an echo. These layers of echoed signals can overlap with and distort the original signal in what is known as multipath distortion. So the most ideal communication scenario is one where there's a clear line of sight between the transmit antenna and the receive antenna. Interestingly, this places an upper limit on the viable distance of direct Earth-to-Earth -earth communications. Because of the curvature of the Earth, the line of sight transmission distance of an antenna will be limited by its height above the ground. So the greater the altitude of the antenna, the greater its range of transmission. As an example, an antenna at a height of 6 feet above the ground will be able to transmit by line of sight to a maximum distance of about 3 miles. If the antenna is instead installed at the top of a 100-foot tower, its transmission range will be increased to a radius of about 13 miles. There are a couple of interesting workarounds for this problem. One is that at certain high frequencies, Earth's ionosphere acts as a reflector. So for these frequencies, it is possible to bounce a signal off the ionosphere to the target, which allows transmission past the horizon. These are called sky waves or skip waves. Another workaround is that at certain low frequencies, waves can be trapped in the dielectric interface between air and dirt to produce surface waves, which hug the surface of the Earth and can bend past the line of sight. These are called ground waves. The final category of factors we will consider in the context of the two antenna system is compatibility of the two antennas. One such factor is polarization losses. These are losses incurred either because of mismatched polarization between the two antennas, for instance, if one antenna is linearly polarized and the other is circularly polarized, or because of suboptimal orientation of the two antennas, for instance, if one antenna is linearly polarized in the vertical direction and the other is linearly polarized in the horizontal direction. In either of these cases, the portion of the transmitted power that does not match the polarization of the receive antenna will be lost. This loss is modeled as the polarization loss factor, or PLF. In the case of two linearly polarized antennas with an angular offset of phi, the polarization loss factor is given by the cosine squared of phi. Another factor that falls into this category is bandwidth. So each antenna will have a certain range of frequencies over which it is capable of sending or receiving electromagnetic waves. In order for the system to work, both the send and the receive antennas must operate over the same band of frequencies. This is not to say that the bandwidths must match perfectly, but they must have some region of overlap, and that region of overlap will be the bandwidth that constrains the system performance. So again, these are the four categories of factors that impact system gain in a two antenna system. Intrinsic properties of the individual antennas, properties of the system configuration, properties of the transmission medium and or environment, and compatibility of the two antennas.